Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. Yeah, he's back. We have uh, Mr. Rick Green, founder of PatriotAcademy.com. He's a former Texas state representative, national speaker, author, and actually a pretty damn good radio host. Rick, <laughs> good to have you on representative. How are you? Hey, Dr. Richie, great to be back with you. All Appreciate right, man. It. So we're gonna talk about teachers having guns or arming teachers in the school. Uh, and also maybe the backdrop of the Supreme Court's ruling as it relates to guns in New York. I don't want to presume what you believe about that topic or those topics. So if you would give us your sentiment and sir, I would then opine. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, of course, I certainly agree with the Bruin decision, as you probably might guess. I, I think uh, Clarence Thomas laid it out incredibly well the, the history of the Second Amendment, why it's so important, why individuals need the right to keep and bear arms, why the most important uh, way to resist sudden violence and stop these uh, the carnage of these mass murder events or any other uh, violence like that is uh, for proximity to have someone that is a a good person with a gun to be able to stop that bad person with a gun. And I, and I think that was the whole point of the Bruin case was saying you don't just have a right to have a gun in your home. Uh, Second Amendment guarantees your right to keep and bear arms. You want to make sure you have that weapon with you when unfortunately the carnage begins and you can stop that carnage just like what happened in Indiana just a few days ago. Thankfully that uh, young 22 year old had his had his handgun with him. Uh, it obviously was more than what uh, a lot of folks want to limit in magazine capacities. And because of that, he was able to stop the threat in 15 seconds and save maybe 100 lives. I mean, this uh, this lunatic had, uh, you know, the, obviously the will and the desire and the ability to kill a lot of people that day in that mall. Thankfully, an armed citizen was there to stop that threat. Okay, and let me get you on record for what you believe about teachers being armed in schools. Yeah, I don't think we should require it of every teacher, but I think we should absolutely allow for a teacher that's willing to get the training. I'm a big proponent of training, as you as you know. I don't think you just hand guns out to everybody and say good luck. Yeah. I think training is vitally important, and so I think a, a teacher or a custodian or a, a principal or any other uh, someone working in the cafeteria, any adult that's willing to get the training uh, should be able to carry. And, and and if that was allowed, you would have more people on campus armed in proximity when something like Uvalde happens inside the classroom. Uh, ready to stop that threat immediately. When you do that, you save lives. When you have a gun-free zone, it, it means people are gonna lose their lives. That, that's just okay. the, the evidence that's interesting. we've seen. All right, so let me first talk about one of the dynamics you brought up in reference to a 22 year old who was in lawful carry um, of a firearm was able to stop uh, an additional murder in my opinion. Okay, I agree with you on that. Uh, but here's the thing, we're talking about policy. Right, there's always going to be a nuance to policy conversation. For example, uh, you know, there are a certain amount of people every year they die because they wore a seatbelt, okay, because the seatbelt was on them. However, the policy is that the vast majority of individuals who wear a seatbelt will have their lives saved. Yeah. And just because a few people will die, unfortunately, every year because they had a seatbelt on and it created a complication during the accident. That does not negate the good policy sense of enforcing seatbelt laws because seatbelts do save way more people under that policy. So here's the point I want to make to you. I would prefer to have a societal construct where we do not have a culture that's gun heavy. The fact that we have so much access to guns and artillery creates a problematic dynamic where individuals like you say, well, the only way to solve it is with more guns. Well, that's the problem in the first case, that's your policy issue. And let me go to the ruling of the United States Supreme Court in the New York case. Clarence Thomas, Thomas writes that this was a dynamic of self-defense. He put it in his summary. And I was really surprised by this from Justice Thomas. So let me ask you this question before I continue. Do you believe that Bearing arms is a requirement based on a self-defense protocol in America. Do you believe that? Uh, absolutely, yes. And, and okay. I, I think our biggest disagreement would be on your premise that it's the presence of guns that causes people to commit crime. It's the heart of man that, that causes people to commit crime. It's the depravity of man or middle illness or all of okay. those, well, well, all why of those not, factors. Why not allow it to be legal to have grenades then? 
I think it should be legal to have grenades. I, oh, you I, say okay. And I want to have a, a grenade, legal. but that, but but but, but, but yeah. Wait, you wait said a minute. Wait a minute. You said something the, interesting here. Maybe you got some linear logic. Policy. Yeah, right. yeah, it's the nuance of the policy, so as you said. You, that's go ahead. Sorry. You believe that it's okay for people to have artillery that's military grade weapon artillery because artillery doesn't really impact societal uh, elements. It's just the heart of man, right? I, I don't just believe that. That that was the original intent of the Constitution. Which, well, let's talk about the original intent of the Constitution. Let's, I'm glad you brought me back to that. Yeah. Uh, so Justice Thomas writes that this is basically constitutional. Uh, and what New York did was unconstitutional because of the need of self-defense that's constitutional, constitutionally determined. Sir, can you do me one favor? Can you find in the Constitution for me, where does it say that bearing arms is for self-defense? Uh, right there in the Second Amendment, that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, and and that's necessary for the security of a free state. So you need a well-regulated but militia that's, necessary. No, no, no. For the it security says of a for free state. a well-regulated militia. So what I'm asking you to do is yep. very simple. Mm -hmm. Can you find in the Constitution for me? Maybe I'm ignorant of it. Can you show me where it says that your right to bear arms is an illumination? of your right of self-defense, individual yes. defense. Can you find that for me in the Constitution? Yes, 100%. Yes, uh, so as, as you know, Dr. Ritchie, as yeah. Jefferson said, on any question of construction in terms of the Constitution, trying to figure out what does it say and mean, carry yourself back to the time, Jefferson said, to when it was actually put into the Constitution and listen to the people that put it in the Constitution as they explain what it what it was intended to do and, and what it meant. And so. All of the founding fathers, I can show you, I've got a whole book of quotes from the founding fathers saying that that's exactly what the second amendment was about. Resistance to sudden violence, they called it the first law of nature, the right of self defense. And it was something you could not give up to society even if you would, because you wanna protect no, your family. I wanna that, protect that, my family and having okay. that ability to have that arm was essential. And so that's why they put it in the second amendment the way that's, that they That's did. really interesting because James Madison who adopted the language from Virginia by the way, James Madison and other constitutional framers said that they wanted to stop the creation of a national army. Are you not aware of that? Well, that doesn't have anything to do with this individual right to keep and bear arms. Okay. The, the right to keep but, and bear arms the, was the not just The constitution never said it was an individual right based on self-defense. My point to you is- No, but it does. Not, it, we, it absolutely no, it doesn't say self-defense. That, that's why it says you, you, you have to read the text of the constitution and read the Words of the people that put it into the Constitution. Wait a minute, so dear brother, you're talking what about what part of the right of the people? Now, what now, part of the right of the people that, confuses you? Okay, who is are that the in the Constitution? Hold on, wait a minute, sir. Are you telling me that you are using what's called secondary documents in order to interpret the primary document of the U.S. Constitution? Is that now, what you're saying? I'm I'm, a, I'm saying that you're using. The intent of the people that wrote those words, mm -hmm. you have to know what they meant by that. And the only way to do that is to read their writings, read their debates. What did they say at the time that they adopted the amendment? If it wasn't an individual right to keep of arms, why would they say the right of the people? And then mm -hmm. as you fast forward throughout history, I know I know sometimes you accuse us us conservatives well, wait a minute, of being before, so gun happy. You go there, I'm gonna let you make that point, okay. I promise. Okay, all right. Who are the people they're referring to? Every, every citizen in the nation. No, sir. Once every again, citizen in the nation, sir, specifically sir, at that time. Once again, you said, sir, on my yeah. show just now, mm -hmm. you have to go back to the original intent of the authors mm -hmm. based on what they said they meant during that time. That's right. You make a point. You said they say this is for the protection of the people. Who were the people they were referring to? Every, every man that could fire a rifle. Every man no, that sir. could, could grab not, that, that musket that's off the mantle they and meant march white out and men, defend the sir. community. They meant white men only because it was illegal for women to bear arms. It was illegal for black folks to bear arms. It was illegal. Not, not for everybody free, else. Not a free black in the north, but that's the now. Okay, here's where sir. you have to, sir. You have to absolutely I just look the at point the whole history, you. Dr. Ritchie. Go Why ahead. do you think people like me that are conservative Republicans are, are so passionate about this right? Because mm -hmm. if you go back to the 1860s, it was the Republicans fighting the racist Democrats and the KKK in the South and defending against lynchings. That's why the right of the people to keep and bear arms was so important. If you had a firearm to defend yourself in the South, white or black, if you were a Republican, you could prevent yourself from being lynched. 4,712 lynchings, 25% of them are white. Something so we I want you to understand much. this. But I those people not. had to have the right to keep and bear arms. Okay, That's why we're brother. so passionate about this, because Republicans have been fighting the racist Democrats for almost oh well, well over a century and a half now. Okay, so now you're gaslighting, but I got plenty of artillery for you, verbally speaking. Those are just facts. Uh, 
Oh, hold on, brother. That I, I'm actually a black person. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> uh, so there Wait, is me. no coincidence that virtually 100% of known white supremacists and members of the KKK subscribe to the Republican Party. No, 99 no, Democrat point. Party. You're, you're on, exactly, wait a minute. Look wait a at minute, the congressional sir. record. Sir, the KKK sir, I'm, I'm was going a to ask the Democrat you, Party. You know I'm this. I'm going to ask you to be respectful of my rebuttal to your commentary. Okay, but All do right? you know that history virtually, of the KKK? Sir, of course I know that history of the KKK, and I don't you give know a they damn, were Democrats. sir. I am a black man in America. I don't give a damn what party affiliation racist ass white people used to have. I don't, because so all of matter. them, sir, all of them were racist as hell on the spectrum, all of them. And I can make an argument today that all of them are still racist on the spectrum. But my point to you is, it is no coincidence that today, where we're living at right now in America, that virtually 100% of all known white nationalists and members of the KKK are in fact subscribers to the Republican Party and the I'm, conservative movement. But let me go back okay, to my okay, original wait, 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 point. Wait, I gotta respond Sir, to just two quick you things will, on that. You'll, you'll respond, I'm okay. trying to get back to the original okay. point. All right. The original point was when the framers of the constitution referred to we the people, they were not referring to the diversity of America. They were not referring even to the context of America at that time. They did not include women. They did not include people of color. They did not even include white men who did not own property. In order to participate in democracy during the framing of the constitution and beyond in that short frame of time, you had to be a white male that owned property. So this was not a democracy rooted in some kind of holy doctrine that we have come to adopt as true and legendary today. These individuals created a document based on their own bias and based on their own prejudice and based on their own beliefs. They were trying to create an empire that they could rule and run and reign over. So when you tell me that this was written in a way to suggest that they meant for all people in America, that's contrary to their own writings and that's contrary to the interpretation that they used during the era. So sir, tell me where I'm wrong when I say when they wrote we the people, they did not have me in mind. Well, I, I don't I don't disagree with you that there were differences in terms of what applied to whom back then, but just you, you don't seem to care about the history on who was what or who did what. If you don't if you don't care about, about who were the racists, a uh, hundred years ago, or even fifty no, years I, ago, I don't care what who was holding white-only primaries. It was Democrats, not Republicans. So sir, if that doesn't and matter you're to you. correct on that. Then why brother, should it my matter point to you? Is this whole um, separation because of parties? My point is, I don't care what party they belong to. Okay, if they're racist. They're racist. That's Agreed. My point. Uh, uh, agree. You Agreed. That? But I have to respond okay. to your spectrum comment Go because ahead. how can you possibly say that white Republicans that were willing to die in the South? to expand the rights of the constitution to all Americans, to make sure that we did become a more perfect union. How can you say that they were racist? If they were willing to be lynched yeah. in order, these were whites, 25% uh, of the lynchings were whites. To that. Are you saying those are racist, that they no, were willing to, to die? Respond. Allow me to respond. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about who the individuals were that actually did fight for, let's say, the freedom movements of the 60s, um, who were on those freedom rides with individuals like uh, Congressman John Lewis, or, or those people who beat. Um, the late Congressman John Lewis on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Yeah. Uh, it is very clearly defined, not simply in a political construct, but in a social, uh, even Christian movement, that it was Christian evangelicals who stood, white Christian evangelicals who stood against Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They subscribed and, to and a conservative ideology. Say that yeah. again. And some that stood with him too, right? I mean, it, oh, sir, sir, that's very, why I, that's very what his letter few. from the Birmingham jail was so good at. Very. It called out the white pastors that were not standing with sir, him. And I, I think he was the right. The reason why that was newsworthy is because it was rare. The vast majority Agreed. of Christian evangelicals subscribed to In a the Republican South. ideology, and they stood against freedom movements for black people. But we I'm just talking about the 1860s. Of, You're going back to the 1960s. Yeah, well, I'm going back to the reality of co of the complexity that yeah. revolves around racism in America. Okay. No, good point. Party, but I was trying to show why the Second Amendment was important and 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 important to all. Well, I'm Americans not saying it's not and important. I, I'm saying important. it's problematic. And the reason why I say it's problematic is because when the Second Amendment was written, one, it wasn't written for the level of artillery that we have. It wasn't written for the people because they did not have me in mind or women in mind. They didn't even have uh, poor white people in mind. But it uh, covers and you it's now. problematic. I mean, what about right now? What's your problem okay, hold with on, the wait Second Amendment me, right allow now? Me, allow me to finish. Okay, sorry. And when the Second Amendment was written, remember, the most complex 
piece of uh, weaponry uh, was basically a single shot. Uh, and hopefully you can reload it quickly. And some of them even had a knife at the end of it, all right? Thank so you. it was written in that context, okay? So we're trying to take uh, this very antiquated uh, Second Amendment dynamic apply it to individual standards when it wasn't written for that because they did not have all individuals in mind. They had certain individuals in mind, but they did not have all individuals in mind. And what you want to do is put it into a modern context without revamping, reshaping, refurbishing whatsoever. It doesn't make sense because you have just admitted it was not written for me. But see, here's the here's the difference in our thinking on this Okay, it, it, it is, is that these these things were written in the Constitution were written based on principles mm, that principles. could then apply to wow. everyone. So it's the same with the right to vote, right? Should okay. we we just disparage the right to vote because we expanded it to women and minorities that the majority then expanded it to women and minorities? No, we say okay, they did the best they could at that time but remember, in the whole there's an actual world. Expansion. This was the situation of the whole world, not just America. It's this in the, the Constitution, sir. On the whole planet, it's so, expanded in the Constitution. So let me ask you this question. You Aren't you glad it voting. was expanded to now where you can carry a firearm and defend yourself like well, I sir, can, all of us? Sir, th- th- this is a simple question. Yeah. We have voting rights expanded through constitutional amendments, okay? We have the right of mobility expanded through constitutional amendments. You have just admitted on my show that the second amendment was not written for everyone. Where is the expansion? of everybody's right yeah. to bear arms in the constitution. Great, is that is a fantastic question, 14th amendment. The 14th amendment makes sure that your right to keep and bear arms no matter where you live in the United States is guaranteed by the second amendment. Prior to the 14th amendment, Come the on, second sir. amendment only applied to the federal government and states could infringe on your right to keep and bear arms based on race, based on whatever they wanted pretty much. And after the 14th amendment, it made sure that all of us could have that. that. That's exactly what the McDonald case, when Thomas wrote the McDonald case, his concurring opinion in that took me to school, man. I mean, I learned so much in that 50 page opinion about the history of the 14th amendment and applying the second amendment to all Americans everywhere. So that that's the answer to your question. You know, that's the equal protection clause, which is really interesting because the 14th amendment section three is the same amendment that says if you have involved yourself in an insurrection against the United States government, you can no longer seek an office of public trust again. So since you are in fact a 14th amendment advocate, do you agree with the 14th amendment section three, that if you have involved yourself in an insurrection against the United States government, you are no longer allowed to seek public office in the United States of America? Well, of course, as you know well, that applied specifically to the Confederacy. And no, people sir. Actually, it applied were involved to in an insurrection. No, but sir. Even it was written the- for it was written for the Confederates. But once again, right. did you not say based on principle, it applies to yeah. anybody that comes under that directive? So, sir, you're once right. Again, you're right. Do I so know I'm right. That was involved in it. 14th Amendment, Section Three. You mm-hmm. with me on this one now, right? Uh, as long as we can clarify here, we're talking about someone that's actually involved in an insurrection, perhaps yes. trying to burn federal uh, court buildings in Seattle or in other places across the no, country, that's, or that, perhaps that's, trying to actually take over the government, which didn't happen on January 6th. Well, they but tried if to. it was to happen, if there was an actual well, they tried to. It, insurrection. It was called, it was called an insurrection, January 6th, they tried to do it. They tried to overthrow who's, who's the democracy. Who's been convicted of insurrection? Okay, name, name one person actually, actually, been charged. Multiple people, multiple people even been charged. charged. No, sir, one person has even sir, been charged with an insurrection. Sir. They have been charged with seditious conspiracy to overthrow the government, which (laughs) is once again, statutorily, that's an insurrection. You don't have an insurrection statute on the federal books. So so let's talk specifics, let's talk specifics on insurrection and sedition, okay? How is having a, and and I'm not defending the people that broke into the Capitol. Oh sure you are. that broke something and walked on broken glass and all those things, they deserve to be prosecuted. They should they should have due process. They should not be in solitary confinement for a year. We're treating them worse than we treat Gitmo detainees. It's 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 an atrocity to the country. But if you were rallying, if you were at the at the, you know, singing hymns and and saying, I want Congress to do its job under the 12th amendment and actually look at these electors. There's nothing sedition about that. Well, that's not what they did. I have 30 seconds left, sir, before the end of this show and the beginning of the next one. That is not what they did. They did not go down there and sing Kumbaya. They actually infiltrated the government. They were looking for Mike Pence. They were looking for Nancy Pelosi. They have gone on record and said they were attempting to stop 
the constitutionally mandated process of certifying the electoral college would would have created a constitutionally yeah. undefined scenario. They have said on record, this is what we tried to do. Who is they? They were simply, un, uh, they were simply unsuccessful. But who uh, is many they? of them, sir, from the Proud Boys to the Oath Keepers. What are you talking about? Who who they are? Nobody in Oath Keepers has admitted to what you just said. Are there? And there's there been are zero evidence of the Oath that Keepers who that have they said their aim was to stop now, the. You had a couple of, of crazy people that might have said oh, these so kind of things that, that had no people. means to do All that. Right. Always good, brother. I got to go to the hey, next show. Bro. I hope I hope Always you keep your you right to bear arms, and I hope you do keep and bear arms, and we're all able to defend ourselves against mass murders. That's how you stop the carnage. All right, we'll talk about the school teacher thing next time. We didn't get to it. I got a whole <laughs> lot for you there too. Enjoyed all it, right. Dr. Richie. God bless all right, you, man. man. All right, God bless you, brother.